Great, we'll get started. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. My name is Susan Miglarisi. I'm one of the associate directors in the admission office at Boston College. And we're very grateful that you're joining us for Get to Know BC, the core curriculum. First, let me offer all of you your congratulations on what a wonderful um, job that you've all done this year um, in a crazy time to apply to college, um, have your senior year probably not be exactly what you expected it to be, and to deal with a really difficult health situation throughout the country and the world. And we in the admission office and at Boston College were very grateful um, to see so many students interested in BC and applying. And we were thrilled um, to be able to offer so many admission. Um, and we're thrilled to have you join us in this uh, a virtual setting to hear more about Boston College. And we have a number of virtual sessions offered in the next few weeks. And I did also wanna mention that we do have some in-person tours available to regular decision admitted students. And there are still some spots available next week and the week after. Um, so if you're interested in doing that, we'd love to see you in person on campus as well. Um, but again, we are thrilled to be able to offer this virtual session to you. My colleague Pete Caruso and I will be handling the Q&A in the background. So as um, our presenters are talking, if you have particular questions, please feel free to use the Q&A and we'll be able to assist in that way. The chat has been disabled, so it's through Q&A that you can get your questions answered. Um, we are going to do this session for about an hour um, and we're really excited to have current students and two professors with us to talk about the core. So I'm going to disappear and hand Q&A and turn it over to Dr. Elizabeth Shalala. Thanks so much, Susan. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Admitted Eagles Day. Congratulations to all. What a journey. Um, I'm delighted that you made it here, though. My name is Professor Elizabeth Shalala, and I'm the Assistant Dean of the University Core Curriculum. The core is the heart of a Catholic Jesuit education. I would like to tell you today about the University Core Curriculum and introduce you to innovative new courses that are part of our distinctive first year programming, specifically the Enduring Question and Complex Problem courses. I will be joined in our session by my co-teacher, Professor Natana DeLongba in the Theology Department and four current freshmen at BC who took our Enduring Question pair in the fall. We have an exciting program today, and I wanna be sure to leave time for your questions at the end. I'm sure you're much more interested in what the students think than what I have to say today, but we'll get to that shortly. So here's our team in the core. The Associate Dean for the core is Brian Garrell, myself and Samantha Beard, our program assistant. We're all here to help you navigate the core during your time at Boston College. Through the Boston College core curriculum, undergraduates acquire a common intellectual foundation. They experience an intensive grounding in the defining works of the humanities, natural sciences, and social sciences, introducing them to the forces that have shaped world history and culture. This focus broadens students' intellectual horizons while shaping their characters and helping them how to discern well, preparing them for meaningful lives and rewarding, rewarding careers. So we have uh, 15 core requirements to be fulfilled over your four years at Boston College. You don't fulfill them all in your first year. <laughs> we don't intend you to. Um, we want you to explore what Boston College has to offer. That's actually the liberal arts advantage. Um, but to help students to fulfill those core courses, we have two, types of interdisciplinary offerings only open to first year students. And these are complex problem courses, which probe compelling contemporary issues such as climate change and race and gender based sexual violence. And then the second enduring questions courses, which explore subjects crucial to the human experience, including health and illness, migration and culture, and the relationship between human beings and nature. So I'm showing you um, on this complex problem slide exactly how students experience a pro complex problem course. They are complex as their name um, indicates. So complex problems courses fulfill six credits. They fulfill at least two core requirements and up to 76 students attend the lectures. In smaller groups, students attend weekly lab sessions and weekly reflection sessions. The Enduring Questions courses 
and complex problem courses extend inquiry beyond the classroom to labs, reflection sessions, conversations with outside speakers, off-campus field visits, creating an intensive shared learning experience for both teachers and students. They exemplify Boston College's innovative approach to core education by establishing a foundation for students' intellectual development and preparing them to become engaged, effective world citizens. So the enduring questions model is a bit different than the complex problem model. And it's the model that Professor DeLongba and I will be talking to you a bit more in detail today, the ones that the students um, took with us in the fall of last year. So in the enduring question model, you have an enduring question that links both sides of the courses. Um, so my course in history, for example, met uh, three times a week and Professor DeLongba's course in theology met three times a week. So it's the same 19 students who took both of our classes. And we have four reflection sessions that happen during the semester. So it's a bit different model, but both um, students really enjoy um, and, are, and are pretty exciting. Again, you can only take them in your first year, so it's important to keep that in mind. So in your first year, um, these are a few of the courses that will be on offer in the fall when you arrive at Boston College. Um, and this is not a full list, I'd like to say. So for a full list of the courses, please visit bc.edu backslash core. So you have an idea of what you'd like to register for. You will have an opportunity to enroll in these fall complex problem and enduring questions courses during your summer orientation session. So again, both are worth six credits and fulfill at least two of the university core curriculum requirements. Again, though, in November, you'll be able to register for spring 2021 Enduring Question and Complex Problems courses. And I want to tell you, you are not limited to taking only one in your first year. In fact, lots of students do. So keep that in mind, too. Student formation is, is a really integral part of engagement in the core curriculum. Um, one way that we do this is through the reflection sessions that I mentioned before. Reflection sessions are a fundamental component of the design of complex problem and enduring question courses, where students are provided time outside of lecture to connect course material to their whole selves. In reflection sessions, students connect the content of the course material to their lives beyond the classroom and to the larger university community. In this way, reflection is intimately tied to the core learning goal designed to teach students how to quote, examine their values and experiences and integrate what they learn with the principle that guides their lives, unquote. Reflection sessions can provide a space for discussion for the ethical implications of material covered in the course and may help students process their reactions to difficult course materials. So all of those previous slides uh, were slides from classes uh, that happened over this year. And I just included this one because this was an end of term last class in one of the enduring question pairs. The two professors are up on the top left. All the screens went blank, uh, black at one point on Zoom. And when the students popped back up, they all had these surprise thank you. Um, uh, panels for the for the professors. And it's just to show that there's a real sense of community that develops in these classes. Stu students tend to get very close. They see each other um, a lot of times during the week and they get to know their professors very well. So it's a special, it's a special type of course for first year students to really integrate into Boston College. So the next thing that we'd like to do is to tell you a little more specifically about our own course geographies of imperialism. And for that, I'm going to turn it over to lead um, Professor DeLongba. You're muted. My apologies. <laughs> um, one of the things that we have had to learn to do over the course of this past year has been to learn all new kinds of technology. And in as much as I've learned to do many new things, this is the first webinar where I've actually been asked to share my screen. So um, without further ado, we'll talk a little bit more about geographies of imperialism, history and theology of colonization. 
And I invite you to take a good look at um, this map because I did not make a mistake um, with this upside down map. I'd like you to think of this map as a metaphor for your move into the world of college. It may seem like your world is turning a little bit upside down, but in the best way possible. Because what we're going to do here is to offer fresh perspectives on the world and your place in it. And I think this map also serves as a symbol for this webinar as we invite you to think about mapping yourselves onto the BC community in your transformation from high school students to college students. Part of our job is to open resources, opportunities, and skill development for you, including critical analysis, writing skills, research skills, presentation skills, communication skills, and how to be a successful Boston College student 101. So Professor Shlala has um, introduced herself a little bit very briefly. I teach in the theology department and also um, in the Islamic Civilization and Societies program. Um, and we have a very special picture here that we're sharing with you uh, because Professor Shalala and I had the joy of working with the same mentor at Georgetown University, albeit at different times. And John Wool has been very uh, important to both of us because he taught us to think in terms of world history, that we need to think globally, but also look for local connections and interconnections across boundaries, communities, and ideas. And we also have to look comprehensively, which is a big part of what this class is about. It's interdisciplinary. We have to think about how politics, economics, religion, history, art, culture are all intertwined. Um, and we have John Fold to thank for that map that was on the first slide because he has it hanging in his office to encourage his um, students to think about what we think we know and how we know what we think we know. I'd like to uh, briefly invite our students to introduce themselves, our students who um, took this class um, in the fall. So we'll give each of you just a moment to introduce yourselves. Uh, where you're from, what school you're in, and your major. We'll start with Clayton. Hi, everyone. My name's Clayton Ackeson. I'm from Burnett, Texas. It's about an hour north of Austin. Uh, I'm in the Cannell School of Nursing, majoring in nursing, and I'm minoring in history. Great, thank you. Um, oh. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Catherine. I'm from Seattle, Washington, and I'm in the Morsi College of Arts and Sciences, majoring in international studies, and double minoring in history and German. Hey guys, I'm Brendan Sherman. I'm from Northern New Jersey and I'm in the Marcy College of Arts and Sciences and my major is computer science. Hi, um, I'm Jasmine. I'm from the suburbs of Chicago and I'm currently undecided in the Carroll School of Management, but I do have a minor in medical humanities, which is through the um, School of Arts and Sciences. Great, thank you. So as we are uh, thinking about this class, I'd like to talk a little bit about how we uh, fulfill the core. And if you don't know much about history or theology, don't worry. We don't assume that anybody comes into our courses uh, knowing anything. So, Professor Shalala? Yeah, so I think the way to start thinking about our, our two courses and their pair is this enduring question that links both sides of the courses. And that's what all enduring questions uh, courses do. So our enduring question is, the age of empires is past, or is it? <laughs> and what we do then is we take two distinctive disciplinary lenses, in our case, mine is history, and Professor DeLongbaugh's is theology, and we use these lenses to start to answer the questions, both in our own classes, but then also by putting the, the question in conversation with the disciplines that we come from so that by the end students are able um, to really think about what it means to look at something from a theological lens what it means to look at an issue from a historical lens and then how those different disciplines are useful in approaching questions um, and so this course again fulfills a history too core requirement and a theology, sacred text and tradition, theology requirement. It also fulfills cultural diversity, which is why I often say in the presentation, at least two core requirements, because enduring questions and complex problems courses often do also fulfill cultural diversity. So, Prof so Professor DeLongba, would you explain that a little more in terms of our course? 
Sure. So for our course, as we're thinking about cultural diversity, we're thinking about diversity as an opportunity to hear from and consider different perspectives, contexts, and experiences, um, both historical and contemporary, and from two different uh, faith traditions. And we'll do that by embracing and really engaging questions related to justice as we think about issues related to power and responsibility, particularly in the face of injustice. And some of the kinds of ideas that we talk about are applicable historically, but also continue to resonate um, today. And so we'll also be thinking about the common good, thinking about what it means to be part of a community, not just an individual, um, and also thinking deeply about the collective experience. So some of the topics that we cover, uh, I'll turn it over to Professor Shalala first. Yes, we look at lots of different things. Um, they're mainly linked to modern empires and their colonial legacy. So as Professor DeLongbaugh spoke about, different ideas, different conceptions about race, gender, religion, in particular in our course, Islam and Christianity. Um, and we look at the historical roots of these ideas that persist to the present day with a particular emphasis on maps, race and race theory, gender, their norms, and constructs. I'll have Professor DeLongba say a bit more about the theology piece of that. So for the theology piece, um, we'll be covering the world's two largest religions. That would be uh, Christianity, which currently accounts for about 29% of the global population, and Islam, which is the world's second largest and fastest growing religion that constitutes about 24% of the global population. So when you combine these two faith traditions, we're talking about 53% of the entire global population, more than half of it. Um, and whether or not you believe in either one of these two faith traditions, my contention is that if you really um, want to be well-shaped as a truly global citizen, having some basic knowledge of and familiarity with these two faith traditions and what they share in common in terms of values and beliefs and then where they differ and why, um, I think is a very important piece of that. As for space and where that fits in, um, I'd like to suggest that perhaps in this very unusual time, uh, we all are thinking about space maybe in ways that we've never thought about it before. I think we're all very conscious of space in new ways. What space is open to us? What space is closed to us? And what new ways we have of thinking about space? Is space about confinement? Is space about boundaries that we're not supposed to cross? Or most importantly, does space present us with some creative opportunities? Thinking about space um, historically, um, and maps in particular, uh, takes us to our enduring question about the age of empires being passed, or is it really? Um, and I have two maps here. I'm hoping that you're noticing a common theme here with maps, because we do talk about maps a lot in this course. The map on the left is a historical map that shows the claims of different European powers on the Middle East and North Africa. And that's the region that we're focusing on in this course. Um, and so we can see which areas were colonized and which areas and countries remained independent of colonization. Imperialism was often expressed through maps and claims to ownership and control over particular spaces, even where there were contending voices. One of the goals of this course is to think about the impact of that history and how it continues until today. And we'll also be looking at a multiplicity of perspectives and motivations. Was it just about land grabs and resources, both natural and human? What about religious motivations? What kind of role did they play? And just because somebody draws a line on a map or in the sand, does that really mean that everybody necessarily respects that line? What happens if they don't? The map on the right uh, shows us our current overseas deployment of US military forces. Um, and I chose these two maps because I think it raises a question about how much has really changed in the great game other than the players. We have European powers represented on the left and uh, American powers uh, on the right. So as we engage in rethinking um, about space, and particularly as you are thinking about moving to college, um, we may have more questions about space and our relationship to it than ever before. Thinking about what it is that makes particular space sacred. Um, is it the fact that it is dedicated space? Is it the fact that there are 
people present who consider it to be sacred space? What about being part of community? What is it about space that makes it ours? And what is our motivation for using that space? And how far does our sense of sacred space carry? What happens if something happens to our space that it's no longer available to us in some way because of a natural disaster or because it's closed off to us? And how does our sense of space carry us forward? Many people think about religion as something that looks backward in time, and is very focused on past events. But if you really think about it, religion is something that always asks us to think to the future. Um, and I think our future uh, really helps us to look beyond not only our communities and our towns and our personal lives, but beyond to a much more global environment and even uh, to the broader universe. That is a really awesome idea. Um, and hopefully it also helps us to rethink a little bit what we mean by boundaries. Are boundaries supposed to limit us in our exploration? Are they intended to keep other people out? Do they help us to recognize our fears? Are they designed to help us create zones of safety and security for ourselves and others? And who has a right to set and enforce different boundaries? What happens when boundaries are transgressed? And is it possible to think of boundaries, especially in an era of COVID where we're all still practicing social distancing, hopefully not for too much longer, um, is it possible for us to be able to respect each individual's need for personal space at the same time that we seek to be together. And part of how we do that is by thinking about other spaces um, that we can turn to. And I'll turn it back to Professor Shalala for a little more on that. Yes, in our course, what was combined, what we try to do is search for answers to questions like these um, on campus, across campus, in the greater Boston area. Um, and in the past year, even um, across the globe in ways that were virtually accessible to us. So our class includes how to read maps and other primary sources as you've seen already <laughs> so far today, how to access the libraries at Boston College. Um, we took trips to museum, churches, moths, mosques. Um, we've had talks from eminent speakers, faculty and student presentations on their research and findings. And our course in particular ends with research papers using both theological and historical sources and methodologies to answer some of these questions that we posed from the very beginning. Um, I would say that we're, we're particularly partial to our enduring question pair, but the, the, the complex problem and enduring pairs all um, are very engaged with what it means to be a first year student at Boston College and start exploring how to answer these questions for yourself. <laughs> and so it makes them very exciting whether you're taking it with us and of course everyone's welcome to who would like to uh, and can get in, um, but also for the other offerings that, that you can see at the, at the core website. So as you are thinking forward with your plans for college, I'd like to invite you to think about your roadmap for life and to realize that one thing that impacts all of us is that during our life's journey, we don't necessarily know where our lives are going to take us or where our paths might become open or closed along the way. But what we can do is to be certain to engage that journey mindfully and with purpose. And that's part of what Jesuit education is designed to do. Jesuit education asks us to think about three really important questions. What am I good at? What brings me joy? And who does the world need me to be? And so my hope for you as you are journeying through this process of deciding where you're going to go to school and where you want to invest, and really think about it as investing the next four years of your life, that you'll think not just um, in terms of yourself and your interests and your goals and objectives, as important as those are, but to also think forward about who you want to be and how you want to respond to the circumstances that you see in the world. What special gifts do you have that you can bring to the table of these global conversations and challenges that we're facing? What kinds of skills and knowledge bases do you hope to acquire and what kind of environment is best suited to help you achieve that and to do what you want to do? Um, we obviously certainly hope that that will be with us at Boston College. We even have a map of Boston College <laughs> to share with you. Um, but rather than having professors talk the entire time, um, we 
are fortunate to have a good half an hour left um, to engage with our students who can tell you the reality of what really um, happens here at BC. Um, so we have um, some questions that we've asked them to think about and I will turn it over start with the first one. I think we'll start with um, what attracted you to these classes. So as the um, as the Q&A has also pointed out, there are a, um, different kinds of, of distinctive first year courses on offer at BC. Um, students should look across these first year distinctive courses. Um, nothing is exclusive. Um, you, you can take one um, enduring question and still have time for a courage to know class or perspectives. Um, there's lots of different things to be interested in. So maybe, um, Brendan, could you talk to us about what attracted you to an enduring question course? Yeah, sure. So the reason I started looking at these enduring question courses was obviously the core. I had talked to it with my advisor and she had basically explained like the opportunity for like formation in these classes and how helpful kids that she'd had before had found them. So then um, as far as geographies of imperialism specifically, it was just, I knew in high school, I had really liked studying like the classical empires like Greece and Rome and all that. So I was, I thought it would be really cool to connect that to the more modern history. And then also look at it from a religious angle which is not something I'd really done before. So for me, that class was the one I picked but I know for other people, it could be different. So I think it's just important to find one that is most like suited to your own tastes. That's great. And it sounded like you, your advisor gave you some good, good advice there as well. Kate, how about you? Um, yeah, pretty similar. Just knowing that I, I had the core and I was really interested in looking at all the different core classes. And I noticed and during questions, I think I got the pamphlet that came in the mail with my accepted students. And that's how I found out about it. And I, I feel like it's like a buzzword, but it's it's very true about a lot of things at BC. The interdisciplinary aspect of um, the enduring questions and complex problems I really really liked. So that's kind of what drew me in initially. Is I I also I mean I'm a history minor. I I'm really interested in history and classical civilizations also. And I thought the theology aspect would be super cool as well. And so I found this class and it very similar story but yeah i just really like i think the enduring questions and complex problems i've just drawn to them because you only get to take them freshman year so i wanted to try it and i thought it'd be really cool to combine different aspects of looking at it in one course thanks for the reminder that um incoming families will be receiving a really glossy brochure of the enduring questions and complex problem courses, um, as well as the distinctive other distinctive first year courses, uh, who will you become? So be on the lookout for those in the mail. <laughs> how about you, Jasmine? I mean, you're in CSOM, so how did you find this course? Um, it's interesting. I remember when I was visiting um, Boston College back when I was doing college visits, the one thing that really stuck out to me was um, when the admissions officers were talking about like this complex problems and enduring questions courses. And again, the interdisciplinary um, part of these courses was just like really interesting and especially the idea of like reflection and like learning beyond just for like memorizing facts or for a specific like um topic but like for a broader idea connecting it and connecting it to our life and our world today was something that um just really caught my interest and specifically with geographies of imperialism i remember it was the one topic that i actually didn't know much about mm -hmm. um even though we learned history in high school um i wasn't really familiar with like the history of imperialism in that sense and then also with like the religious aspect as well um i wanted to take a course that i wasn't really familiar with and again just to like broaden my understanding that's great how about you, Clayton, in the School of Nursing? Um, really similar to what everyone else has been talking about. I was a debater in high school, and I think that um, imperialism had like a lot of implications for that. And I, I've always been intrigued by history and kind of learning about historical empires and, and what that can mean in today's society. And this course really interested me because of that. And also just um, fulfilling the two core requirements, obviously, like everyone else as well. Um, and it did it in a way, it was something that I was really interested in. And I also wanted to know a lot more about like religion beyond Christianity. Um, I wasn't really familiar with Islam and 
Um, I feel like a lot of history courses I took in high school didn't really talk about Northern Africa or the Middle East or those kinds of things. And it was really intriguing uh, to have the opportunity to learn about that. Uh, before we go to your next uh, question that I set before, has anyone taken another enduring question or complex problem course this spring? Yeah, Kate or Kling, can each of you tell us um, how that fit in your schedule and how that's going as well? Uh, yeah, so I'm taking one that's called a coming of age in literature and film. It's a literature and arts credit. And I, I actually emailed the professor about it last semester because I saw it on the brochure and I, I knew I really wanted to take it. So I actually got um, what's called like overwritten into the class because I reached out to them beforehand. And so that was kind of, I kind of built my schedule around being able to take that class, but it's been super, super cool. It's entirely discussion-based class, which I really, really love. And it's a, a cool way to examine like personal issues going, like coming of age is a very topical thing for people that are like freshmen in college. So it's cool to examine things that are going on in my own life and world through different mediums. That's great, thank you. Clayton? I'm in the American Divide, the Philosophy and Economics of Inequality. And this class, um, the Geographies of Imperialism really sold me on the idea of enduring questions and being able to, like the intersectionality of two different subjects. And I think looking at it from two lenses really made a valuable impact in how I was able to like take in the material. And um, it's very similar in just having a small class size and being able to have better discussions. And I think that's really valuable. And I like, I love um, both that class that I'm taking now and the class of this past semester. Fantastic. Great. Thanks so much. So how are, so we we're talking about these enduring question or complex problems courses. How would you say these courses are, are different? It doesn't have to be better, but how are they different from other courses you may have taken? How are they distinctive? Jasmine, maybe we'll start with you. Um, I definitely found that having, at least for the enduring questions part, having like the two um, different classes, address like the same topic and like the same question was very different than my other classes and so doing the homework and work for it um it felt more connected and it like i guess like it flowed more um with my understanding as well and i especially found that the way that we approach this class too it wasn't like learning for a test like that was one thing that was really different for me um very used to like making quizlets and like studying and like preparing for like exams. And so to have this class be more like a reflection and writing based class and discussion based class was um, really refreshing. And it was something that I actually really, really enjoyed. That's great. How about you, Brendan? Um, yeah, and the other thing that I wanted to mention that is kind of distinctive about these classes is that it's all freshmen. Mm -hmm. So like everyone in your class is sort of in the same boat as you from the start of the semester which it's definitely like really scary on your first day of college classes. So it's nice to sort of have like a home-based class and they'll ask you like how your week was at the start of the classes. Like, it's not like say your calculus class where you just go and you're like working instantly. It's more of like, just like a community sort of to talk to with people. And then just like Jasmine said about how looking at things from two different angles is so interesting. Like I wanted to sh share an example so in our class, we looked at um, British museum artifacts. So for example, one week in the theology class, we'd be examining them for like religious significance in the Islamic world. And then the next week in history, we'd be discussing like the ethics of the British empire, just sort of claiming these artifacts for themselves and like how imperialism sort of fueled that. So it's just like you get an understanding of what you're learning in two different ways. And it's just, a lot different than the other classes. Hmm. Do other classes um, have the same sort of, were you interested in all in our courses by like the reflection sessions, the outside speaker? I'm sure other classes do that, but was that something you, you found particularly interesting in, in the Enduring Question pair? Kate? Um, yeah, I. I think the reflection sessions is one of my favorite aspects of the enduring questions for both of the classes I've taken. I think aside from, I definitely agree with what's been said in addition to that, one of the most kind of distinctive aspects of these classes is that extra time outside of class. Like you said, like 
you get to have guest speakers and like the I know we didn't get to but like the class last year got to go into the city and go on these cool trips I think that's really cool not only for like developing further thinking and perspective but also class bonding and just cool experiences so I think that's a really unique aspect of these classes that I love okay a deeper question now guys um, did anything change for you personally or academically after taking this pair? You know, be honest, maybe it didn't. <laughs> um, or maybe it's a part of the bigger context of, of becoming a, a college student, right? I mean, maybe it was all happening at the same time um, because it is very different to being a high school student. I think some of you share that during, during the, the course of the semester. Um, why don't we start with Clayton this time? Yeah, definitely. So I, I would say I experienced a great deal of change because of this class. Um, from an academic context, I, I think this helped me recognize how I best learn, like going into college, having a much smaller class size that felt like a tight knit community was really nice, especially coming out of high school and kind of making that adjustment to like making new friends, uh, adjusting to like the rigor of college courses and those kinds of things. And then in terms of like personal development, I would say that it definitely facilitated a better transition in like, like I said, the friend making aspect, but also uh, like a close relationship with my professors. It didn't, it didn't feel like a lecture, like it, it felt like um, a discussion based class and I could rely on my professors more than just an academic context. And I gained so much value out of like the, the education things that I learned in this class, but also just having them as mentors and being able to like rely on them for like personal advice and those kinds of things and, and having them there in the advisement process and going forward in my college experience was tremendously valuable for me. That's great, Clayton, thanks. Jasmine, you're nodding your head. Yeah, I really wanted to echo um, what Clayton was talking about, especially with the professors. Um, this class for me, like, I was very inspired by how passionate like Professor Shalala and Professor Longwa were in um, what they were studying and how they were able to kind of apply this um, what we were learning in class to like the bigger questions of like what we were talking about in terms of like the Jesuit education and like forming yourself and your identity and what we are to be for this world as well. And so um, definitely the class made me reflect a lot and that's um, has kind of like shifted my like attention to like asking why I want, like why I'm studying certain things and kind of like the, impact and significance of it beyond just learning for college. That's great. Um, Kate or Brendan, one of the questions from the audience is like, can you actually talk about a reflection session that happened and like what happened? And can either of you give an example from the, from the course that you recall, both of you? How about Brendan and then Kate? unless you have the same one. <laughs> oh yeah, so the one I was gonna mention was we were talking about uh, Edward Said and like Orientalism in class. And we'd gotten the perspectives of both like the history and theological side of that. And then for the reflection session one night, we attended a guest lecture where um, an expert on Orientalism came and just gave us another perspective on that and had a, a little bit of Q and A also. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Brendan. Kate? Um, I was actually going to talk about the same one with the guest lecture, um, but I can talk about one from the class I'm in right now, hmm. which uh, we use what we did is we got to all get together and watch a film together and then spend time like discussing the themes and how they apl apply to our life. Sorry. And stuff like that. So that's another form of reflection that you can do in classes. And I really enjoyed that one. Yeah, and just to remind folks, so there's four built-in reflection sessions in um, first year schedules for the Enduring Questions courses, and there are weekly reflection sessions in the Complex Problem courses. Yeah, Clayton, your hand was up. I'd like to add um, one that I really enjoyed was um, Professor David Northrop got to speak with us about, we actually read his book in the class, and and reading it's one thing, and it's, it's definitely, there's a lot of value in that, but being able to actually speak with the author who did the research and who wrote this book, I, I think um, really answered a lot of questions that I had, like kind of was really helpful in filling in the gaps and, and kind of tying it all together. Yeah, that's great. Thanks so much, Clayton. Um, 
Okay, so for incoming students, how do you recommend they decide how to fill their core or what to take in the first year? What, what would your advice be to yourself <laughs> this time last year? Did you, did you do it right? What tools did you use? What, what would you do again? Maybe think about that just for a minute, whoever's ready to go first. Um, I'm sure it's pressing on the minds of, of people listening. Brendan, you think you're ready? Yeah, sure. So my biggest piece of advice, which I didn't know when I was coming into BC, is that not all of the core classes are the same. Even aside from uh, like the complex problems and enduring questions courses, if you look on the course listing schedule, it might list every course as lit core. Like there might be 60 sections of lit core. But then if you go onto the department websites and check the actual course numbers, sometimes they'll have more descriptions about like how each course is unique and what the professor is planning on doing. So it's really important that you like check on the, your class before you register in it. Like don't just register in a core to be a core because some of them can be wildly different and like you'll have a really different experience if you follow your interests. That's good advice. Thanks, Brennan. Jasmine? Um, I think my biggest advice is like take classes that you're actually interested in. Um, the fact that BC has this core system, it's get built, building in a structure for you to explore what you, um, what is some, something that you might not have been able to do in like your major classes or like concentrations. And so in that sense, um, pick classes for that interest you, not just like to take the class because um, it's an easy class or anything like that. And then also, especially with like complex um, and enduring questions or like the other first year writing, uh, first year classes, um, make use of that because it's only available for freshmen. And so there are all these other core options that you can take throughout your four years, but there are these specially designed ones for first years and it kind of just adds on to the first year experience. That's great. Clayton? Yes, I think Jasmine said it perfectly. You like it, it's it's so important to take what you're interested in doing. And that that made all the difference for me. Like I, I had a bit of a difficult transition like coming into college and, and having this class that I loved so much. It just made it just made my week so much more enjoyable and and getting to share that bond with um, everyone else. And that that just makes a huge difference in like your day-to-day -day life going through college and really helps with your experience. Kate, did you want to add anything to that? Uh, yeah, I feel like everyone summed it up really well, but just real quick, like, like has been said, don't blow off the core as just like requirements you need to fill, like Jasmine and everyone has said. Really, there's so many different classes that fulfill the core. I guarantee you'll find ones that you will find really enjoy, enjoyable and like challenging and interesting. So do you read, like, there's so much information. Don't just blow off the core. Like you can find really, really cool classes. And I definitely agree. I recommend at least taking perspectives and during questions or a complex problem, if not some mix of all three, because they are such like foundational pieces of freshman year at BC that are just really cool experiences you won't get anywhere else. Here's a question. Were there any skill sets that you, one thing Professor DeLongba and I think about this pairing is it's how to BC 101. <laughs> so, um, you know, we throw a lot at you. We hope, we hope <laughs> that some of it um, is useful. Was there anything that you learned in this course that you've been able to apply to other courses? Like um, any skill sets, any tools? Yeah, Kate. <laughs> this one's kind of specific, but bless you for teaching me how to do Chicago citations because <laughs> um, I've needed those in so many classes and several other professors just kind of expected you to know them. So get it, learning how to do that really, really has saved me for a lot of papers. Pleasure, Kate, pleasure. Yeah, Jasmine. Um, one thing we learned a lot about is like when we read text is looking at like the source of it and like when it was written and where it was written for what purpose. And so from that, like now in other classes, um, whenever I like, whenever we read primary, secondary sources or anything like that, just like looking at those questions and learning to question more to like 
get more meaning out of beyond just what it was written. That's great. Have you all used the libraries? Yeah, Clayton? Yes, this, this class was really helpful for navigating the library and the like the online resources that are available too for doing research. And I would say that the research aspect and like finding information for papers and those kinds of things, especially the, the final research paper was really helpful for me as a nursing student, like we're expected to do a lot of um, healthcare research and those kinds of things. So knowing like where to access those resources and how to use utilize them has definitely helped me write papers now too. That's great. Anything to add, Brendan, or did we get covered? Yeah, the only thing I would add is just about the research techniques. Like it wasn't just that we learned them through doing in the class, like we actually had librarians come and speak to us about what we could do at the library and like how to catalog our sources. So it's just like a lot of real world experience with the research, which I think will be really helpful for the future. Yeah, that's great. Okay, here's the biggest question. Did, did these courses direct any of your future studies at Boston College? Did it, you know, since it was your first um, semester of freshman year, did it influence you at all? Not, not just in like taking another enduring question or complex problem or fulfilling your core in a certain way, but actually um, what you may want to study, who you may become. <laughs> yeah, Kate. Um, yeah, I think this class in two ways had a really big impact on my future at BC. I originally came in as a, as a poli-sci major, and I think this class was a really big part of me realizing I, I want to shift my focus broader than just like American politics and really more look at the world and, and how the events of history like influence where we are today. And I think that's a big part of why I switched to an international studies major. So I, I do, I do credit this course for being a big part of why I changed my major and I feel I'm on a path that I actually am much more passionate about now. And then outside of studies, I actually now am working for Professor Shalala. I have an internship in the office of the core through the relationship we formed last semester. So this class definitely had a huge impact on, on my future and what I'm going to be doing for the next few years. So I'm really excited about that. And in fact, people um, watching the webinar today may actually talk to you over the summer, Kate, because asking about enduring question and complex problems courses. Yes, I look forward to seeing some of you, hopefully. <laughs> That's great. Jasmine? Um, I, so I am currently undecided in CSOM and I'm still like navigating that, but I think this class has, the biggest thing for me was realizing that I wanted um, my education to be more than just about like the business school. And so that's how, um, even though my minor is not related to um, the history or theology aspects of this course, I still wanted like to add that minor knowing that I wanted to like broaden my um, education. And I think this class kind of showed me that because besides this class, my other classes were like CSOM core, which is completely different. And so having this course kind of balanced my, um, my schedule and it was really refreshing. And that's just something that I continue to value. That's awesome, thanks so much. Brendan? Yeah, so in my case, I came into BC pretty sure that I wanted to major in computer science. So um, like the idea of a history and theology class is a little bit further away from what I plan to do in the future. But I think um, what it really reinforced for me was to, in taking these classes was that like, I don't have to just limit myself to learning about computers or anything. Like I learned that I do enjoy talking about these global issues and like this history and humanities as well. So just like in the future, no, keeping that in mind and like exposing myself to newer things, just like ha having more confidence and being able to try new subjects. That's great. What we say is use the core to explore. And it sounds like everyone here has done that. Clayton, last but not least on the answer to this question. Yes, exploration is definitely a big part. Um, I would say like echoing what Brendan said as a nursing major, um, Theology and history are definitely, I would say, pretty far away from, from what I intended to focus on. And this class is a big part. I declared a history minor this semester, and this class is definitely why um, it's kind of guided me into thinking more about like broader issues and 
like not not only like questioning like the way the world works but also like uh thinking more about myself and who i want to be and i think history is a great mode to to look at that great none of these students have been paid i might add um you know these are just great answers thanks um you all came from this is a little beyond the core but you all came from different parts of um the country from different backgrounds any comment on, on, it's been a unique year for sure, but how you're feeling now, could you reflect on that? How you're feeling now that you've been at BC for a year and you, you did it, you did it. <laughs> and, and you're about to go back, go back to where you were a year ago. I mean, how, how are you feeling about that? Any, um, any self-reflection? Jasmine? Yeah, I can say that this year has been a crazy year and that in looking back, like so much has happened that I could not have expected, but um, I'm very grateful. And I think for students who are considering BC too, like um, the school has something very unique that when I first uh, applied and decided to come here, I was drawn towards it. Um, and I later discovered that more and especially through like the relationships I formed and like as well as like my education and so in in coming back I've just been extremely grateful for all of my classes and my professors who seem like who really love what they're doing and who really care about their students that was really encouraging for me especially when the transition was a lot harder and then finding other students who are also just passionate and wanting to become better people for this world um, and obviously the online situation made it very difficult but I was still able to find a lot of really good people and they encouraged me and inspired me to become better as well and so that is just something that I think BC draws students like this towards the school in that way. And I hope that everyone else also had a similar experience. That's great. Yeah, Kate. Yeah, definitely to echo what Jasmine said, this year has been insane and very transformative in a lot of ways. But um, I just, I think BC has been an incredible spot. And I think for me as someone who because I did come from so far away I didn't know anyone coming in and all my friends went to other schools kind of comparing our experiences. I don't know what it is I i'm guessing it has something to do with the the Jesuit tradition, but the community at BC really is kind of unlike anything i've ever like saw at any of my other tours or heard from any of my friends. The professors here like the relationships you form and the student body and the way like I do feel. I feel like this place is my home and I really, really appreciate that. And it means a lot to me. So it's been a crazy year, uh, but I, I've i been just so loved my time here so far. And yeah, I hope, I hope you all love it too. That's great. Thank you so much, Kate. Brendan? Yeah, so I think like any transition on the scale of moving to college, it's gonna be a little bit daunting. And like, I think everyone felt feelings of like being overwhelmed initially, but BC really does do a good job of making you feel at home. Even during COVID, like they were trying so hard with the first year experience thing to give us like some sort of a normal year and uh, hopefully it will be better next year too. But I think like just all of your professors, like people have said, are there to support you. Like even in giant first year lectures, they'll still be available in their office hours and they'd be willing to meet with you and responding to their emails and stuff. And like that wasn't always true in high school. And I know from what my friends have said, that's not necessarily true at other schools. So there's just a real feeling of like support with your teachers and the people you meet. Like everyone is, there is a sense of community. That's great. Clayton? Yes, it's, there's definitely a fantastic community aspect. Um, coming from Texas, like a lot of my friends went to really large public schools um, and, and coming here and just having that community aspect. And it's, it's so easy to form bonds with people in classes like these that are smaller and, and you can build more personal relationships and the availability of professors. That's just um, so many of my friends just didn't have that experience. And especially, especially in the context of COVID, like w without having that, like I honestly, I don't think I could have adapted to the college experience very well at all. And I mean, just looking at gas and like every day when I come to campus, like it just reminds me of like how like how amazing, how amazing and beautiful it is. And I'm very grateful for this past semester. And uh, BC has definitely steered me towards the person that I want to become in the future. 
well, I'm sure I speak for myself and Professor DeLongba when we say you were all a delight to have in class. And I speak on behalf of BC to say that we're very happy to have you with us this year. Susan? We're coming up on the five o'clock hour. Um, so we just wanted to thank everyone so much for all their wonderful information. We hope that it was helpful for all of the participants out there um, to hear a bit more about what our core curriculum is all about. I always like to say it's the spine that runs through your education at BC. It's really what we build off and it helps students become who they're going to be, um, which a lot of them refer to here. Um, so it's been a wonderful session. We thank you all for that. Did just want to mention if you liked hearing from students um, we have a number of student panels upcoming in the next couple of weeks um, they're usually in the evening so please feel free to tune into those um, and we hope that all of you have a wonderful rest of your day that everybody stays safe and healthy and we look forward to seeing a lot of you on our campus in the fall have a good rest of your afternoon everyone thank you